Thanks to Audible for supporting this episode of Super Carlin Brothers. Hey, brother! Then, spoiler alert! Just kidding, I wouldn't do that to you this early in the video. Or would I? Maybe I would, Ben. Maybe at some point in this video, I would reveal that Snape kills Dumbledore on page 596. Maybe I wouldn't, but maybe I would. Consider yourself warned! Wait, ugh, Ben, is there anything worse than someone spoiling the end of a story for you? It is like they are literally possibly robbing you of a cultural experience you cannot get back. An experience that might have been vital to your entire existence inside of a fandom. An entire series might have less meaning to you because that true moment of shock that has been building for the last six books and seven years was taken from you. Which could ultimately mean you miss out on this, the community. Now, can you imagine if someone told you that Snape killed Dumbledore and then you weren't a fan of Super Carlin Brothers because you didn't like Harry Potter? <sighs> okay, maybe that is a little bit extreme. And chances are you would still like Harry Potter even if you knew what happened. It is a pretty good story. But no matter what, that's not as extreme as the lengths taken to ensure that that exact thing did not happen to anyone before the Deathly Hallows came out. This is the story of how 8.3 million books in the US alone were kept a secret, patiently waiting on pallets in the back rooms of bookstores until midnight. Even imagine being a Harry Potter fanatic working at a bookstore the night the Deathly Hallows is about to come out, knowing that separating you and the end of the entire series is just millimeters of thick black plastic. You could be the one who reads the story first. Can you feel that temptation, viewer? Can you feel it? Oh. I could feel it. Spoiler culture. Like it or not, it's something we all have to deal with. And surprisingly, I feel like here in the last few years, we have all sort of started collectively agreeing on. I don't know about you, but my personal code goes something like this. If something is happening live, like a sporting event, it is okay to be tweeting or sharing about it as it happens. I mean, let's face it, no one's going back and binging the 2004 NFL playoffs on Netflix or anything. On the other hand, if it is recorded like a new movie or a new series on Netflix, you absolutely need to check with everyone in the room before you start discussing it. But then sometimes the lines are a little bit blurry. Sometimes the community or fandom around something exists simply because everyone's sharing about it while it's happening, even if it was recorded, like, like The Bachelor or something. Not that I watch that every Monday at eight. Not only do I definitely not watch it on Mondays a day, but I definitely didn't record a short podcast with Ben called Rose Bros on our Patreon available for $5 a month. Definitely didn't do that. Either way though, that's kind of low stakes spoilers. There's also the high stakes spoilers like uh, Game of Thrones, anyone? Infinity War, anyone? I have literally never seen such collective respect for spoiler culture than people have for Infinity War. In fact, even right now, I'm feeling bad that I even brought it up and I'm telling you that there are spoilers. Like, you know, just mm, forget it. Go watch Ragnarok and Black Panther and Guardians Volume 2 and then go see the movie and pff, you're gonna love it. Love it. Was that a spoiler? Nah, you're gonna hate it. Never mind. Don't listen to me. I just, ah, crap. It's been kind of crazy watching spoiler culture evolve throughout my life. I remember when I was a kid and teenager, it was almost like a reverse effect when you were watching TV shows. Because season Seasons of television were not just readily available to you back then. If you missed it live on TV, you just had to hope you caught the reruns. If you were like me on some shows and you just caught it in the middle of the series, you might be completely ignorant of jokes that happened way early on. I remember I started watching the show Friends about six seasons in and had no idea what all of this we were on a break jokes business were about and my mom thankfully was very careful never to tell me. By the way, they were totally on a break. Also, Ross, maybe you should have done that. But that brings us back to Harry Potter. And as far as I can remember, the first great spoiler the internet truly ran away with. Page 596, Snape kills Dumbledore. Thankfully, I did the only sane thing and locked myself in my bedroom, only exiting for bathroom breaks and water until I finished the Half-Blood Prince. But I remember a few days later logging on to AOL Instant Messenger, rest in peace, and seeing on someone's away message those 
infamous words. I cannot tell you how furious that away message made me. Like, it put me on permanent edge. I am still afraid of that away message today. The sad and terrible truth is that once something is out of the bag, someone out there is gonna try and spoil it for the rest of us. But the good news is that at least for the people at Bloomsbury, they take not spoiling stuff super seriously. From the moment a Harry Potter manuscript was complete, the main goal, the main goal of anyone who was lucky enough to come in contact with it was one thing. In their words, midnight kids. Which is to say, the kids who begged their parents to let them stay up until midnight, go to a bookstore, dress up in costumes, and count down the seconds until they could crack open the latest Harry Potter book. Fittingly, they call this the magic moment. And in order for it to exist, one must open the book in a complete state of ignorance with no idea what adventures lie within. 100% spoiler free. And for most books, this isn't really a big deal. There aren't exactly hordes of people lining up literally all over the world dying to know what happens next in the series. But by the time the seventh Harry Potter book rolled out, the final book in the series, the one where we learned how it was all going to end, yeah it was a problem. A single leak, a single leak anywhere in production, manufacturing, shipping, shelf stocking, anything, and the magic could have been ruined for millions. And you don't think about it so much, but think about just how many people had to be involved in the printing and transporting of so many millions of books. And just how valuable being one of the first to know what happens could be to some people. Like, some bookstores were literally raffling off the first in line position. But Bloomsbury was prepared. They had a literal brain trust that met every week for months to protect this secret. Their job began on January 11th, 2007, the day J.K. Rowling wrote the final words of the Harry Potter saga. Which, fun fact, after the release of Goblet of Fire, J.K. Rowling revealed that at the time, she thought the last word of the series was going to be the word scar. Specifically, it was going to be only those he loved could see the lightning scar. But ultimately she decided this was too ambiguous. Is the scar there? Is it not there? Is Voldemort really gone? Eh. And she didn't want that. She wanted to make it clear that Harry won, that it was over, that all was well. And those ended up being the final three words of the series. Anyway, back to keeping Deathly Hallows a secret. Step one, transporting the manuscript from the UK to the United States. Solution, the man in charge of the task, a guy named Mark Seidenfeld, literally sat on the manuscript during the flight and didn't get up the entire time to ensure its safety. Once in the States, a very few copies are made and handed off to the script editor, the cover artist, and a potterologist, which is someone whose literal job it is to make sure that the wizarding world remains factually accurate and it sounds like the best job in the freaking world. I don't know if you're hiring, but like... And if you're thinking to yourself, huh, why not like email it or something and it's because email can be hacked. Not that manually delivering things doesn't have its own set of dangers as well. After the script had been revised, the manuscript had to make another trip across the Atlantic and Lauren Klein, Potterologist, was given this duty and she gets stopped by airport security. Now, I don't know if you've ever been stopped by airport security, but it's terrifying even when you're not hiding something. And in this case, she was. I mean, nothing illegal, but definitely something very uh, valuable. Fortunately, there was no breach, and eventually they get to the point where they have the final draft where very, very few copies are printed and just distributed to the people who needed to complete their jobs on the book. And where do they print those books, you ask? Well, good question. Bloomsbury has not revealed the location of of the printers of the books, or even how many locations there are where the books are printed. Which might sound like a crazy link to go to, but the threat was genuinely real. When the Order of the Phoenix came out, a forklift driver was caught literally trying to steal several pages. And for the Half-Blood Prince, I'm not kidding, two guys spent four and a half years in jail for trying to sell a copy to the press. And of course it's all good and well to keep the secret in your offices and in your extra secret printing locations, but 
but what about once the books are in the wild, on the trucks, in the stores, but not on the shelves? Well, they thought of that too. Books leave the printers covered in large, thick black plastic bags, and the boxes are individually GPS tracked, so if anything fishy goes on, they know about it. But again, that only gets you to the store. Once you get there, it's up to the store owners themselves to keep the secret. And the way you do that is by basically making them sign their life away should the secret get out by their store, which of course they're going to agree to because everyone in the world is gonna buy the next Harry Potter book. Think about it though, if you're Barnes & Noble, this might not be such a big deal. You are a big company, you have nice security you can employ. If you're like a tiny bookshop and you just wanna carry a few copies of Harry Potter, Potter, that could be like terrifying. You're basically inviting criminals to come try and steal a copy. Fortunately though, you wouldn't have to worry about that for too long because as one final layer of protection, most books didn't make it to stores until they were inside of an eight hour window next to midnight. So they were barely there before they started being sold. And there you go, Ben. That's how you keep a secret and preserve the magic moment of Harry Potter. Of course, the real magic of Harry Potter though is that there is no ruining it. To say that you ruin the entire series just by knowing the ending of Head of Time is crazy. I mean, it's tragic if someone tells you, but guess what? I've read each book probably 50 times over since then, and uh, I remember how it ends each time. Moral of the story, please be respectful of spoilers, but if something does get spoiled for you, just know that it doesn't necessarily mean something is ruined. Harry Potter and the characters and the story has only grown even more meaningful to me as time has gone on. But the best way to avoid spoilers is of course just to be reading everything before everyone else can, and the best way to do that is by using today's sponsor, Audible. Guys, I cannot tell you how excited I am to finally announce that later this month at VidCon, Ben and I will be sitting down for a good old fashioned book club discussion with Philip DeFranco, members of the DeFranco vlog team, and Domix. And we will be discussing the new book Florida by Lauren Groff on Audible. I have personally just downloaded and started listening to it and have been immediately drawn in. It is a wild story about one of the coolest places in America. Definitely good reading for anyone making a summer trip to VidCon or of course Florida or the beach or really anywhere your summer adventures may take you. Audible is offering our viewers a free audiobook and 30 day trial membership which you can take advantage of by just texting SCB to 500 500 or by going to audible.com slash SCB. I will put a link in the description. Seriously, it's as easy as texting three letters and you can get your own free copy of Florida or really any other book you might want, even if you don't stick around after the 30 day free trial. And here's where it gets really fun. We want to make sure that our audience's thoughts and comments and questions get heard during our book club discussion. So again, text SCB to 500 500 or go to audible.com slash SCB, download and start listening to Florida today, and then start leaving your comments and questions in the towel section below and Ben and I will make sure that as many of them are heard as possible during our book club discussion with Philip DeFranco, the vlog team, and Dom later this month. Guys, I seriously can't even tell you how excited I am about this. Like, Philip DeFranco was a huge inspiration to Ben and I in the early days of Super Colin Brothers. Like, the blue wall? The blue wall? That's inspired by him. Go get the book. Florida is only a little over seven hours. Shouldn't take you long. We're going to get as many questions in there as possible and be on the lookout for that video on the DeFranco vlog channel a little bit after VidCon. Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, did anyone spoil any part of Harry Potter for you? Let me know in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! But guys, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter content from us. If you want to learn about the rarest Harry Potter books on Earth, you can check out this video right here, or if you want to see the secrets revealed in the latest Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald screenplay, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.